Hello, my art-loving friends. So you can see there's a lot going on on the desk right now because there's a lot going on in my art life right now. So I know we have a lot to get through with boxes that I've received lately. Plus, I've received one more box from one of you that I haven't even opened or shut. Well, I've opened it myself. I haven't opened it for you guys yet. So I, I have to add that to the list. I need to add that to the list. <laughs> but. I want to get to these gelatos, and I plan to do that, but not this video. Hopefully the next video, that's the plan. That got put to the side because a very generous friend had her husband make this for me, and I want to start playing with this now, so I think it's time we look at this first, and then we'll get to everything else on the list, plus the two pages of things after what I just showed you on the list. So what is this, you might ask? Well, this is that ever popular palette that you see on Etsy now, and some people have shown it on their channels. However, she had her husband make it. So they made this themselves, which is so impressive. And I gave them a black and white copy of my mountain painting, which I'll link in the corner for you in case you missed it and in the description box below. And that was as good as their engraver could do because it was kind of detailed. It was hard to get them a good copy of the line work of that painting, but it's still beautiful. I know what it is and I think that's what matters. <laughs> so these wooden palettes work like this. They come together with really strong magnets so they can stay closed and keep your paint protected and then they open and they snap together on the side with those strong magnets. And then you're supposed to have an office clip nearby and you can clip it together just to give it some more stability in case you bonk it or whatever, it won't fall apart. And a nice added bonus of that office clip is that you can clip it to your sketchbook when you're working with this palette and have the sketchbook and the palette held in just one hand so you can, where's my paintbrush, hang on, be painting with this other hand and not have to hold your palette, so it's great. And these little circles obviously are the mixing space. This was such a generous gift and I cannot wait to use it. Let's, let's just get it done already. So I have a lot of paints in tubes and they all fit in this little square tin I have here, which is kind of fun. And it's kind of funny because I've been using my Himi Mia palette that I'm trying to use up for our Use It Up series almost every day that I can. And I've been using it in every single watercolor class. So I've gotten used to the paint in it very much, very well. And then I pulled out my core palette. I was doing something and I wanted my core colors. And so I pulled out my core palette and every single time I got way too much pigment because core paints are incredibly pigmented. They're very strong and they spread really quickly and easily. Even though I thought about doing a mixed palette for this instead, because I thought it would be fun to have a mixed palette at some point, these Paint wells are pretty tiny. They're probably quarter pan size, maybe a little bigger. Yeah, no, I would say they are quarter pan size. And because of that, I think that the advantage that I will gain by using core paints will make it worthwhile putting them in this palette as opposed to any other brand. So we are going to use just core paints in here. Here is my main core palette. And this is going to be useful because it shows all my colors. The magnet stuck to the bottom of the tin here. Look at this. It's stuck, it's stuck to the bottom. <laughs> that tells you how strong those magnets are. Isn't that awesome? So these are the 25 colors that I have to choose from. And this holds 18 colors. So I just have to eliminate a few. And I don't think that's going to be too terribly hard. I don't need the titanium white. So regardless, I'm going to go through these colors and pick the 18 and I'll be right back with you. So one of the coolest things about this palette is that you can have a huge color selection. 18 colors is a ton of colors. So it wasn't too hard picking the colors. What was hard is being happy with the order they go in since it's a three by six. So my purple here is the only outlier. I don't really like it there. I want it up here with the magenta, technically, I'm just used to that, but 
then I'd have to boot one of the reds somewhere else and or the green. I, I don't know. So this is what it's going to be and I'll just get used to it based on my swatch sheet. So now we have the arduous job, which is actually kind of fun. I'm going to take this clip off for now so this is level, of pouring all these paints into the palette. Now this cadmium yellow primrose is my only light yellow that I have with Core, and it is almost empty. So if this takes the rest of this tube, I will not order it yet because I have enough in my palettes altogether that I don't need it yet, but I am definitely going to put it in my cart on Amazon as a reminder that I need it. And if I run out on one of these soon, then it'll be in there and ready and I'll be getting reminders every time I buy something from Amazon that I'm going to need this eventually. So I'll be interrupting myself in a second, but this is going to look a little jumpy because I didn't realize the time lapse I had on was so fast, but that color is cadmium yellow primrose. And I had to use a toothpick to smooth it out because I just, oh, I just overfilled it. <laughs> The next one is the Nickel Azo Yellow PY150, that Cadmium Yellow Primrose is PY35. That third one was Transparent Pyrol Orange PO71, followed by Permanent Scarlet PR168, followed by Cadmium Red Medium PR108, followed by Quin Magenta PR122, and that one is Green Gold PY129. All right, guys, how long have you been yelling at me that there are not 18 wells in this palette? Duh, don't you know how to do math? There are 15. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Anyway, I don't know why I thought there were six wells down there. I just like glanced at it and I'm like, oh, my brain saw six and so now we have 18. So we do have to take three paint colors out of here. I think it's too bad I put the green gold in there already because that's one that I would sacrifice happily. I need the sap green. I could make it with a blue and a yellow, but then I'd use a lot of yellow and I use a lot of yellow anyway. So I kind of just want the sap green in there. And I do use the Viridian a lot also. So I think I'm gonna try and keep those. Yeah, that green gold would have been a sacrificial one, but now not so much. I wanted to keep the cobalt teal in there because I do a lot of water scenes when I'm out and about. And I assume that's how I'm going to use this palette is when I'm out and about. So let's see how much I've used the cerulean blue quite a bit and the thalo blue, but I've hardly not used the ultramarine at all, which is ironic because ultramarine is supposed to be like the staple blue in everyone's palette. So what I think I'm gonna do, I'll take out the cerulean though because I can mix a version of that with some other colors. So cerulean's gonna go. I do use the dioxazine purple quite a bit in this palette, but I could make that with the magenta and one of the blues. So I could sacrifice that one, I suppose. If I hadn't already poured paint in here, I would have just started this video all over. <laughs> so you guys would not know what an idiot I am. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. All right, let's sacrifice a brown. So these two, these two, and okay, which brown? I don't like raw umber. It's just a handy dark color to have, but I think it's going to go. Raw umber, bye-bye. Okay, so the question is, do we put the indigo on this side of the browns or that side? Beats me. Well, that was a fun interlude. I make these silly mistakes all the time. I, I think I'm just going too fast, you know? My brain's just like, yeah, 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 that's, that's it, that's it. And then I sit down and actually to do a piece of this. It's like a big mistake there. Wow, this transparent pyrrole orange is so thick that it is not going to flatten. That's okay. That is okay. All right, well, now that we've eliminated three more colors, I'll put you back on time lapse and you guys can stop yelling and laughing and rolling your eyes at me and probably clicking off my video because I'm an idiot. Okay, talk to you again soon. Now we have sap green, viridian green, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, van dyke brown, and indigo. Okay, they're poured. I am going to go leave. It is four o'clock in the afternoon and I go teach a class at the college for three hours plus drive time. So I won't get back to this tonight at all, but it'll have all those hours this evening and all night 
to dry out so hopefully tomorrow they'll be fairly dry so I can do the swatches pretty easily without getting into wet paint. You can always hope and I do hope they settle a little bit. I overfilled a few of them so we'll see. Hopefully the thing shuts. <laughs> Oops. It's about eight o'clock the next morning now and most of them are pretty dry. This one here only has a dry film on the top and it's super liquidy underneath but most of them are pretty dry, especially the ones that were harder to start with, like the Viridian, the Transparent Pyrrol Orange, and so on. Yeah, the rest feel dry, and you can see they did sink down enough that it closes <laughs> successfully without a problem. Phew, I was worried about that. I'm going to create the swatch sheet real quick for this, and I'm pretty sure it will fit in here and still close. I meant to test that a minute ago and didn't. It's not fully happy with it in there. This might be a swatch sheet that I need to attach to the back or just not laminate. I suspect if I laminate it, it's not going to hold together with the magnet. Or I just keep a band around it because once it's open, you're good. Solid, you're golden. <laughs> golden, get it? Golden core watercolor. Anyway, moving on. I had zero intentions of doing the salt effect that I have been doing in my swatches lately, but when I saw the transparent pyrrole orange, I'm like, no, I have to. I just have to. These are really small squares, but I was still able to squeeze a little bit of salt onto that right side of each one. And because they are such small squares, I decided to do all of the labeling on the back side of this. Watch sheet. It's all dry. I wiped the salt off and labeled the other side. So these are the colors I put in there and I have a painting all set up and ready to go. So let's paint. All right. I am painting this from a picture that I believe I took on one of my mini road trips. Who knows where? <laughs> it looks like it might be up between, I don't know, where I live and Laramie, Wyoming, because I went over there a couple times to visit my niece when she was at WyoTech. Or it could be in the Meeker, Colorado area. All of that looks similar. Oh, you know, this could be that cabin that's on the way up to our cabin. <laughs> I don't know where it is, but it's a pretty picture. And I'm not leaving it up there for very long because it's covering the mixing area in the palette and I want you to be able to see that. So off with the picture. And core paint is such a delight to work with. You just have to barely dip your paintbrush, the tip of it into your paint and get a little bit of paint. And it spreads so far in your mixing well and on your paper especially if your paper is wet. Oh my goodness, the spread you get with core paint when your paper is wet is just out of this world. Nothing else compares. <laughs> what I would love to know from you guys is a couple of things. Have you used core paint and what do you think of it? Do you love it as much as I do or do you not like how you can't control it like some of the other brands? Secondly, have you ever used a wooden palette like this with these magnets and these tiny mixing spaces? It's very interesting. I am actually enjoying the process a lot, and I will talk more about that at the end, but I want to hear from you guys. In the meantime, the only colors that I am using on this painting are the Cadmium Yellow Primrose, the Green Gold, which is ironic because I didn't even want it in this palette, but I use it a lot, the Sap Green, the Burnt Sienna, the Van Dyke Brown, and the Indigo. I had a bit of a hard time being patient here at the end because I really wanted to get in my dark trees and details, but some of the paper was still very wet and it does take a long time on etcher paper for it to dry. So yeah, I had my paint spread a little bit more than I intended in a few places and had to be patient, let it dry a little, and then go back and do my deep darks. You might notice that I move around my painting a lot and that's because as one piece gets filled in it kind of gives you a reference about value to the next place and the other places you've already put in and so by moving around as much as I can at least it gives me the advantage of kind of pulling the painting together as I am painting and I can see oh this one needs to be darker down here now because the dark I just put up here made it kind of disappear and so on. Well, there it is, one painting down with this palette, and I am really pleased with the size of the opening of these wells because you probably saw 
I used my biggest brush, my Winsor Newton Cotman size 12 in there, and there's just no problem. There's plenty of space. I actually feel like I used a ton of Van Dyke Brown and Sap Green and the Indigo, and boy, did I forget how strong that Indigo is. You barely tap the brush into it and poof, explodes into your color mix. I was really concerned this wouldn't be enough color mixing space, but as you saw, I kind of tended to use up all of my mixes, which left it pretty well clean enough for any other mix. Plus, I chose a painting where all the colors were compatible with each other, so it didn't matter if there was a little blue or brown or green left in the coloring mixing space. Very pleased that I didn't have to get another mixing area out. I am surprised. If I were to make this palette, I would make this whole inside a mixing space, maybe with divisions like this still, but maybe square or two bigger ones if you could. But this worked. It worked great. And I hope that dragging my brush over the side of the wood, I didn't treat this wood or anything before I poured all this in there. So we'll see how that stands up. I'm not sure if it was treated by them before they gave it to me. No problem so far. I am thrilled to have this. It is such a unique treat. And no, I did not use the clip and clip it to my sketchbook or anything. It's actually pretty heavy. And you saw in the beginning of the video that you can clip it to your sketchbook, but it's hefty, it's something to think about. Make sure your clip is new and strong and not going to fail. You might even get one a little bit bigger than this. They make one one size up from this for sure that I know of. And that might be a good idea to clip over this and a sketchbook because the width of this pretty much takes up this entire clip as it is already. If you're gonna clip over a sketchbook, get a bigger one than this. Well, this is fun. I'm gonna let these dry out a little bit more. They're still a little bit wet before I close this back up in there. Although they're deep enough in there, it's probably not a problem. It's just my own hang up about closing it on this when it's wet. <laughs> But I'm happy with the little painting. We are getting so close now. I know I keep telling you guys this to the end of this Edger sketchbook, so I'm glad I used it. I do have an unfinished painting here, which makes two unfinished paintings in this book that I will have to get to. All right, I've blabbed enough, but you guys, I have so many fun videos coming up. I can't, like the list, oh, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. You saw that at the beginning, and there are pages and pages after that, and plus sticky notes after that, that I didn't even talk about. So definitely subscribe if you're new and you'll get notified when all these new videos come out. I have a bunch of fun supplies I've been gifted and just who knows what. I have an incredible series idea that I am over the moon excited for. Do I have time for a series? Not really. I'm still trying to get to the dot card series and the use it up series, which I have done so much progress in the use it up series. Yes, so definitely check out that playlist. I'll link it up in the corner and in the description box below and at the end card at the end. So I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye for now. A very generous friend. Ah! <laughs> and that is my life.